Hi all, welcome to another Dave Downey Fly Tying Video Production. Here I'll be sharing my favourite flies and methods of tying them to make catching fish better for all you anglers around the world and also making tying these flies easier with my styles and techniques. All the flies I use are going to be tied here uh, and they're all tied to catch fish, not just the angler and I've caught fish all around the world using these flies. At the end of each video will be a list of materials required to tie the fly just in case you missed it in the video and also a link to my online shop where you can purchase the flies and the materials required to make these killer patterns. I hope you enjoy the video and that you will pass the word round about your mates and your fishing pals and your fishing clubs. Get them to subscribe, come and check out my videos and, and just enjoy them to be honest because I want people to catch fish on the flies that I use. So today I'm going to be tying a wee special pheasant tail nymph which is quite easy to tie. Uh, you can tie it with different different styles, you can use jig hooks, you can use straight dry fly hooks, I tie it on different hooks. Today I'm tying it on a fully mill jig hook, that's a size 14. We've got a 3.2 mil fully mill tungsten slotted bead on it in silver. Same again with most of my flies, I tie them with silver beads and I tie them with copper beads. My two favourite. I do tie some flies with gold beads and black, but not very often. So what we're going to need for this fly is some Coq de Leon for the tail. If you can't afford Coq de Leon and you have like an old grizzle cape or a sort of mottled brown cape, you can use the fibres off of that. That's just really for the tail. I'm going to start selling some Coq de Leon on my website. Not right now, but I will be soon. Next thing I'm going to need is some glow bright number 8, which is an amber floss. We're going to use that for the thorax. We're going to use some copper wire, small, uni wire. I just find this stuff doesn't tarnish and it's usually really, really good. Uh, that's a small size, uh, number 33. We're going to use that for the rib. Obviously, for the body, we're going to use cock pheasant tail. And obviously, the feathers come in different colours and different shades. I kind of like a, a brownie ready colour one. So that's what we're going to use for that. Uh, and once again, the flyer is going to be tied using the, fluorescent, the fire orange uni thread, the AO. I don't think I've missed anything out. I do feel as if I have missed something out, but no, I'm pretty sure I haven't. Oh, sorry, I have. What you're going to need is a permanent marker as well. Okay, so that you can see how old this one is. I get them, it's a letter set one and it's black. You're going to need that because uh, we're going to do something with the thorax and you're going to need some resin. So you can, everybody's got their own favourite types of resin. I've been playing about with the new Venryards one, right? Obviously that says red on it, but I'm going to be using clear. Now, to tie the fly, we'll just start here. Same again. Same as all the flies, we want to try and get the bead fixed, so just use a thread, just push it with your thumb. Just also it means that you're making sure that the slot's in the right position. And then we'll just run down the hook shank. So we're down there, so what we want to do is get some Coq de Leon. Now, some people say, oh, you need four fibres or three fibres or five fibres or whatever. I just grab a bunch. Because I don't I don't think the fish really care, to be honest. Just tie it in. Okay. So, this really is one of the most simple, basic, fast flies to tie. And it catches a lot of fish. And I haven't done a video on this one before. Not this particular. Obviously, I've done videos on pheasant tails, but not in this particular style. So then get some copper wire. Now, as in my other videos, put the copper wire in the slot in the bead so you're not getting any jaggy bits sticking out. And just run the thread up and then back down. Okay. Then we're going to get my cock pheasant. So you're wanting about five or six depending on the thickness, five or six strands. So I've cut it and I'm going to tie it in at the tips, but I'm going to cut the tips down a wee bit because I, I don't want them being too fragile. 
So we're just catching that in. Then we'll just run the thread back up the body of the fly. Okay. Now, two ways of doing this. We can just varnish the thread on here, run the, the cock pheasant up, or we can take the thread back down. And this is just to give it strength. You know, a lot of people will say, oh no, he's not running the wire against the, the opposite direction of the cock pheasant. I don't care about that and it's never let me down. So what I'm doing is I'm wrapping the cock pheasant around the thread. As I said, there's different ways of doing this. It's really your own choice. And we'll just wrap it. Okay. So let's take it up. Doing it that way gives the added strength to the cock pheasant. Then we're going to catch it in. And we'll trim that a little bit off. Okay. So this is really, really basic. It's an easy fly. Now, as I say, some people would go anti clock the opposite direction. I don't bother. I'm just going to tie the, put the wire in the way the pheasant went. That's five turns. So it just depends on the kind of mood you're in. So that's. You could leave a fly like that, that's a killer pattern as well if you just sit with the, the orange thread at the back of the thorax. But, what I want to do, now I've spooled my floss up because I'm not going to wind it on by hand, I've put it on a bobbin holder. Right, so that's me tying it in as normal but then I'll pull it back over and go over the top of it again so I'm not getting any wee tags sticking out. And then we'll trim that bit off. Now, what we want to do is just build up a little thorax. So that's how it's got the amber in. Next thing is just to finish it off. Same again, even though it's floss, still using the wet finish tool, tie it off. Okay. And then just trim it. Basically that's the fly finished. All we're going to do now is put a bit of resin on it. But when you put this black marker pen on it, I'm going to put it in to here where the slot is. But it'll, it'll bleed round the floss. The floss will seep, seep it in and it'll bleed round. So we're just wanting a little line in there. And see how it's bled round? It actually goes right round the floss. That's all you need. And because of the colour of the floss and that type of marker pen, it actually goes a really dark olive, which I quite like. So what we're now going to do is, we're going to put our resin on, okay. So as I says, I'm using the Veneers one just now, but I do have other stuff from China that I like to use. So I'm just going to put it on the back of the pheasant tail, and just up there on that bit. So it then becomes a perdigon pheasant tail. And then we'll just put the lamp on it to set it. Now I don't have a little hand lamp or a bug bond lamp. What I actually use is, and anybody that wants to know, just send me a link or send me an email at dave at flyfishingworld.eu and I'll reply with a link showing you where to get the lamp. Because normally I would do a dozen of these flies at a time and then epoxy the whole lot, well, UV resin the whole lot at the same time. But obviously, uh, I can't do that in this video. So what I've done is, I've, I use a, an actual nail, uh, the, the ones the girls use and some guys use to do their nails. Uh, it's a, a, a an archway, uh, and I can put all the flies on a piece of foam and just push them in. And I'll probably do a video on that at some point as well. And you can see the UV way it changes the fly. Right, but there you go. So that, that's nice and hard now. And if you look at the back of it, you can see it. I mean, you could give it another coat if you want. That'll help it sink a wee bit faster. But, no. That, to me, that's a great fly. Catches me a lot of fish. And I tend to fish it on top dropper. And I do tie it with a 3.8mm bead. 
uh, if I want to fish it on the point. But just as a pheasant tail, it just seems to catch a lot of fish. And this little black bit might not really matter that much to people, but it, when you see it in the daylight, it is very much olive coloured. And the, the pheasant tails last really, really long when they're tied like that. Alright, so once again, I really do hope you guys are going to go and catch fish with these flies and, and enjoy tying them as well. So follow me on Facebook again, it's David C. Downey. You can follow me on Instagram and check all my flies out, my videos. It's Dave Downey Fly Fishing. Uh, and check out my guiding site and my online shop www.davedownyfishing.com or www.fly-fishingworld.com So thanks for watching again guys, it's another Dave Downey Fly Time production just for you guys and have a great day and have a good, really good fishing day. Alright, bye!